All right, folks, so here we go with the ZBIT X. It's super popular radio right now. Everybody's getting one. When uh, I got mine out of the box, I had a problem. I wasn't 100% sure how to power it up. So I turned to the Internet, and I saw that that was a common problem for lots of folks. And then I saw a lot of bad information that was out there. So let's talk about it. So here's the radio. It's up and running. When you have batteries in and even powering off of a power supply, I did want to show you. You can see right here. It's telling you the input voltage. So right now in around 7.9 volts. Um, that will change with the strength of your battery or dependent upon the power supply. But the first question that comes up is how much voltage should you use? <clears throat> and right here you see 6-9. It's not the cleanest on this 3D print. And some people have actually misinterpreted this for 6.9 volts, which I'm not sure I understand because 6.9 volts, you have two batteries in series here. That would be 3.4 volts per battery, um, which you, you can get with these batteries as they start to get to the lower end of their nominal voltage. But two of these batteries charged all the way up is somewhere around, uh, they're around 4.1, 4.2 each. That would be 8.3, 8.4, somewhere right around there which would be much higher than this. This is six to nine volts, and it's also backed up in the instruction manual that we'll take a look at. I don't like this. You turn it off by pulling the plug. <clears throat> and uh, I think that's a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a hassle. Um, when you take a look at it, people are leaving these batteries in here full time, and that's not a good idea. These batteries have a piece of like heat shrink or shrink wrap around them. And the, I think I got some examples here. These 18650 batteries, this heat shrink is very susceptible to tearing or peeling or ripping. So a lot of times people will buy extra uh, shrink and then rewrap them all the time when there's problems. I did want to take a quick look at a couple of different batteries because there was also a little bit of confusion around flat top versus button top. So this would be, these are 18650 batteries. I should get that out of the way. That means 18 millimeters across, 65 millimeters tall, and the zero that makes it a 50 means that it's a round battery. It's a round designation. This is a button top battery. And this one here is a flat top battery, and you can see a little bit of a difference there. The other thing is, is that some of these batteries are, let me line them up. The yellow one's a little bit longer. It's not longer because it's a button top. It's longer because it has a protection circuit in there. So if you buy batteries with a protection circuit, they might not fit. So what I'm going to be using for mine, and I'm not telling you what to do, and I'm not telling you what to buy. There'll be no affiliate link for batteries. You have to make the decision on your own. I'm going to use unprotected batteries, and I'm going to use flat top batteries. Now, one of the things I don't like is using unprotected batteries because it's my understanding there is no over, under, or reverse polarity protection in the power chain for this particular device. So you got to be really, really careful with what you do. And we'll talk about some of those risks as we go further down through this video. But uh, these are different batteries, and there's also different battery chemistries, and we're going to cover that as well. Now, what you can do is that you can use an external power supply by leveraging this jack. This is a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter barrel connector. But there might be some questions in your mind around polarity. So if you roll your own cable or use another cable, you definitely want to check that. Let's do that now. All right, so here is my Kiwi's multimeter, and I have it set on a voltage setting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this baby around. Another thing I want to caution you about is, is that lithium iron batteries can discharge very rapidly in the event that there's a short. Keeping this like this is a risk because you could short out this barrel connector somehow. So I'd be real careful about that. <clears throat> and what I'd recommend is getting a plastic case like this. And when this is not in use, take your batteries out and then put them in this plastic case. Let's see if I can figure out how to open it. There you go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative and I'm going to put it inside for the barrel connector and I'm going to touch this one to the outside. On my multimeter, you can see it says negative 8.21. And that's because these batteries are not really under charge. When they're hooked up to the radio and powering it, they're under charge, or under load, I should say. And when they're under load, it's going to draw that power down. Now, if you notice this is a negative, that's because I have it backwards. So if you wire your cable up and you plug it in backwards, you're going to have a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the positive inside the barrel connector. I'm going to touch this to the outside. And then I, now I have 8.2 volts. And so what this is telling me is the outside is negative, inside is positive. Also, check your cable if you roll your own. 
when you remove these batteries from your device, make sure the cable's unplugged. That way you're safer. So I'm just going to gently pop these out because I don't want anything to happen to the casing or the heat shrink on these batteries that we talked about. Okay, they're out. Let's take a quick look at this. When you put batteries in, pay attention to the polarity markings on here. Your positive side here, negative side here, positive and negative. I have a buddy who smoked his device right out of the box because he put his batteries in backwards. The other thing is be careful right here. This isn't the most robust of connections. If anything happens and you need to repair this, just remove these screws and it's an easy fix. You can also remove these screws and remove this battery connector altogether and just power it off of an external power source, making sure that you have the right voltage. Another thing I want to talk about real quick is that the device requires around three amps of draw when you're using it. Anything less than that and the device will reset and that can be a problem. If it resets suddenly like that, potentially you could have a problem with your sound card, with your SD card. I doubt it's going to be a problem, but it can be. And there have been reported reportings of corrupt sound, uh, SD cards. Um, the other thing is you might incur some damage <clears throat> with some sort of uh, uh, voltage or current condition. So just make sure that you supply it correctly. <clears throat> now, the batteries that I'm going to be using are these. They're made by Samsung. So don't carry in pocket. You want to make sure you carry these in a plastic case. These are INR. And we're going to talk a little bit about INR batteries as we move ahead. And they're made by Samsung. I also have some IMR batteries around here, but I don't know where they are right now. All right, this is the user manual for the ZBIT X, and it's pretty plain, we'll call it that. Um, let's go down, and here's an introduction to the device. But right here, it says the ZBIT X operates off 6 to 9 volts, and comes equipped with a 18650 lithium iron battery holder for portable operation. And that's awesome. So pay attention right here, 6 to 9. So that's where I don't understand how there's certain confusion around what type of voltage you need to supply the radio with. It's right here in the manual, plain as day. So when you see the ZBIC X user guide under initial setup, it says set your shack power supply up to 9 volts and use a DC barrel connector, 5.5 millimeters by 2.1 millimeters to plug into the radio. Ensure that the power supply can source a minimum of 3 amps of current. When you, If you wire one of these or make one of these up, make sure that you pay attention to polarity. If you get that backwards, you're going to have a problem. And it says out in the field, you can insert two 18650 lithium iron batteries, paying attention to the polarity of the cells. And you can see clearly inside the battery case, it tells you what side is for positive and what side is for negative. Okay, so let's take a few minutes to talk about lithium iron batteries in general. So when a battery is fully charged, it's somewhere around 4.2 volts. Sometimes I'll say 4.1, 4.15, 4.2, 4.25, 4 and so forth. We run these batteries in this device in a serial configuration. And so that means we take the voltage of the two batteries and add them up. So two fully charged batteries would be somewhere around 8.4 volts. Once you put these under load, that's quickly going to drop. When a battery is fully discharged, and I mean door nail dead, is going to be around 3 volts. So in our serial configuration, we're looking at around 6 volts, which is the lower end of the rating for what the device will run on. Now what's important is what we consider or call nominal voltage. And this is the average voltage when the battery is under load for the duration or most of the duration of the battery's life. When you put a fully charged battery in, under load, it quickly drops to nominal voltage and stays there until it starts to taper off quite fast when the battery starts to become fully discharged. And these batteries, that normally hovers around 3.5 volts to 3.7, depending upon the manufacturer. So you're looking at around 6.5 or a little over 7 volts for the duration. And that's exactly the spot that we want to be in to run the ZBIT X. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the chemistry of the batteries, and there are some considerations there as well. There's various chemistries that folks use when making uh, these 18650 batteries, and you want to make sure that you pick one that is appropriate for your uh, configuration. So in this case, the ones that I'm going to be using are either the um, IMR. So the designation for these batteries is kind of goofy. When you, when you look at IMR, it really is a little lowercase l for lithium manganese round. That R means it's a round designation. And the capacity of these is moderate. 
and the capacity of these is considered moderate. Now, what's cool about them is that they can discharge at a very high rate, and that makes them really good for amateur radio. So when the radio is in receive mode, I just need a, a, a low uh, steady current draw, but I want to be able to burst that when I key up, right? because it's going to put a bigger draw on my battery. The other thing about the manganese batteries is that they're very safe. They're less susceptible to having uh, runoff problems. The next one is the lithium cobalt battery. These generally have a high capacity, but their discharge rate is low, meaning that they can't really burst when you key up. And what we see with this particular device is, is that once it starts to pull around three amps, if it's not getting that three amps, it's going to reset. And we don't want that. The other thing is, is that these uh, battery chemistries are a little bit unstable and you generally need circuit protection on those. I think we talked a little bit about the circuit protection it actually makes the battery a little larger. It's like a small built-in BMS and uh, it might not fit into your radio. Another good choice would be INR, which is a lithium nickel manganese cobalt. And these have a uh, reasonable capacity. The discharge rate can be high and they're safe. So that makes these another good choice. The other one that you see is the NCR, and I'm not 100% sure on this chemistry. I do have some of these batteries. Uh, they're made by Panasonic, and they have a very high capacity, moderate discharge rate, and moderate safety. This is one of the most copied, faked, and cloned batteries out there. Uh, they're discontinued, I believe. The, the ones that I see all the time are generally fake, and I would be very cautious about using any of those unless you're buying them from a known reputable dealer. That's not eBay, that's not Amazon, that's not AliExpress, that's not Banggood. I would, I would buy them from a known battery distribution company. Okay, so there are many, many, many 18650 battery models on the market, but this is just a couple of examples that I put together. Um, on the top, I have the Panasonic's listed, and you can see that they have a capacity of 3600 um, among some of the highest capacities. Um, LG makes the INR 18650 M36. It's close. Uh, Samsung has the INR, and that is 186035E, and it's widely available and reliable. Another one is the MJ1 by LDG, and um, pretty good battery. Sanyo has an NCR. Uh, this is a rebadged Panasonic, I believe. So you see a lot of that in the battery space. Um, they're consistent, they, they have a good reputation, but again, there's some challenges there that we talked about earlier. And then you have these XTAR 4000 uh, milliamp batteries. These are protected, and I just put this one here because you have to make sure that you're aware that some batteries come protected and they may not fit into your case. So I just wanted to put a couple of key considerations together. Um, you wanna take a look at discharge rate versus capacity. Higher capacity batteries typically have a lower maximum discharge rate. Why that's the case, I'm not 100% sure. So if your application requires a high current draw, you might want to look at batteries that have uh, lower capacities but higher discharge capabilities. So with 18650s on the market, almost all of them are overstated in their terms of capacity. And so what I would do is I would actually pay more attention to discharge rate and again, make sure you get them from known reputable battery dealers. Uh, when we look at protected versus unprotected, the the uh, 18650s that are protected have a built-in safety circuit. It's at the bottom of the battery. And what it does is it prevents overcharging, over-discharging, and short circuits. But uh, as we mentioned, they might not fit in your device because they're a little bit larger. Um, unprotected cells are shorter, but they require external battery management systems for safe operations. And I'm not 100% sure what kind of safety mechanisms we have in the ZBIT-X at this point in time. And then I, again, I can't stress enough the amount of fakes, copies, clones, and substandard, even used batteries that, that uh, get rebranded re or relabeled. Um, you want to make sure that you're definitely getting batteries that are from trusted retailers. Okay, in addition to batteries and power supplies and all that kind of stuff, uh, some folks might advocate for the use of booster buck converters, and I don't think I'm going to do that. So what these devices do is they either take a lower voltage and boost it up to a higher voltage, or they can take a higher voltage and buck it down to a lower voltage. And some devices do both. So what we do in the device like this is you have your input and your output. Here you can see in, and so these two would be your positive and negative in. 
And what happens is, is that your energy, your, your voltage, your current goes into this particular device and it goes to these transistors and these transistors switch back and forth and they store and release energy at a controlled rate in order to get your achieved desired output. Um, the energy is not stored in the transistor per se, uh, usually uses something like these capacitors. Now, one of the problems that we, and I'm sorry, I wanted to mention back here, you have two potentiometers and then you use these to adjust your output settings. Now, these things, you can get them pretty cheap and like a few bucks. And part of the problem is the quality of construction and the quality of components that are used on these. So you could get a failure during operation, which could potentially cause you problems with your device. Also, your supplied um, voltage that is coming in might change based off of your power supply or certain fluctuations, and that could mess up what's coming out. Probably not the biggest problem. The biggest other problem with these is that they don't produce a very clean output. So your voltage will tend to have ripple on that, and that varying ripple can cause trouble for sensitive electronics, and I'm going to consider the ZFIDX a sensitive piece of electronic equipment. The other thing is, is that these can produce uh, electromagnetic interference and they can actually produce noise that will be seen as RF and raise the overall noise floor or increase noise on your radio. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Abe, you're wrong. I use these all the time and I have great success. That's fantastic. Good for you. I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to advocate somebody else. I think it's easy enough to find sufficient 18650 batteries or just use a benchtop variable power supply. So when I'm at the house, I'm going to use this to power the device, this MFJ 4230DNP. Any power supply will do, but you want to make sure this one does up to 30 amps, so I've got no problem with the 3 amp to roll. But when I turn it on, <clears throat> let's see if we can get this thing to come up. Right now I've got it set for 6 volts. This is a variable power supply, meaning I can turn it. So I normally operate it somewhere around here, 13.4, 13.6, something like that because I'm using devices that require 12 volt DC of power. If I connect this up like this, I'm going to have a problem. So what I want to do is always make sure that I adjust this to an appropriate voltage before I connect it. And since we can go six to nine, let's go with like 8.8 .8 or something like that. That's about as close as I'm going to be able to get it this morning. So I'm going to set that down. And we talked a little bit about checking the polarity of our homebrew cable. So let me go ahead and get my homebrew cable out and we can look at that. <clears throat> so here's a homebrew cable that I made. And what I want to do is I want to go over to my multimeter and then I'm going to turn it on and I am going to go to continuity testing. And I think I hit this function until I see this little speaker up here. So that means it's ready to test for continuity. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that my center of this cable is positive. So I'm going to put, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to put this in here in my power, in my power pole. And then I'm going to take my barrel jack and then I'm just going to go ahead and touch this shield and it should be nothing. And we have nothing. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch my center and I've got continuity. So that means that this cable is correct for this particular device. Let's go ahead and get it set up. So what I want to do is I'm going to connect this to my power supply first. Double check and make sure I'm at 8.5 volts on my power supply. And then I'm just going to plug this baby in. The device powers up. Let's take a look and see what it says on there in terms of voltage. It's probably got a bolt. It's got a boot before it tells us what the voltage is. You can see down here it's saying waiting for the ZBITX to start. So let's give it a couple seconds here. There we go. We're up and running. I'm connected to a dummy load. So, and then here, I'm sorry, here you go. I was looking at the wrong spot. And it says we are at 8.2 volts. <clears throat> so I think that's going to wrap it up. Hopefully this helps you make a decision or gives you some uh, context or understanding around how to power this particular device. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching.